Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today I wanted to take a look at the Astro C40 TR or tournament ready controller. This isn't a regular unboxing. I know you've seen tons of those before. I've bought this product and I've had it since it came out and I've used it since it came out. So about a week old for 40 plus hours. And I wanted to give you my thoughts, my review and uh, in-depth look at the controller and maybe some comparison. Just to give you a little backstory, um, I woke up one day and for some reason I decided that I wanted to buy a scuff controller and that day uh, just happened to be the same day that the Astro C40 controller was released early. So then when I called GameStop and asked them if they had scuff controllers, they said, you know this other controller came out today. And when I looked into it, I, I felt pressured, like, should I get this thing that people already know about that 90% of programmers use or should I get this new product? from the headphone company in their first time making a controller. I am an audio guy, so I can say that I'm kind of excited about having an audio company make a controller. Um, you know, I felt torn because I didn't want to get uh, a product on its way out right when the new great thing came in. Decided to go to GameStop and to see the controllers. I thought that I'd be able to see them and hold them. I didn't want to uh, buy something to try it and return it. And there was just us three. It was me and the two guys that worked at GameStop. And I was like, hey, have you guys ever seen any of these controllers or used any of them, the Scuff or the Astro? And they had it. So I was like, why don't we just open them and take a look at them? So they did. And I appreciate them at the GameStop for doing that for me. I was able to hold both of the controllers. Um, I can tell you that from holding both of them, I like the Astro better uh, because I have bigger hands and it just felt better. And I liked that the orientation was already in PlayStation orientation, it wasn't the offset like Xbox, I prefer that. But then I found out that the Astro has some modularity to it, that I can change that orientation, that I can swap it from offset to parallel, and that I can remove and potentially replace the analog stick. And I could clearly see that there are some, some forward thinking advantages to the Astro over the scuff. Um, so I chose the Astro. It's one of those things that if you buy this product with the expectation that it's going to make you a tournament ready gamer, then you have a false expectation. Um, however, if you are a intense gamer, you will find an edge with this controller for sure, for sure. What would convince you to buy an Elite controller or to spend $200 on a controller? Okay, so, you know, the benefit of having paddles on the back of a controller is that you don't have to move as much, right? So here's a perfect example, it's just as simple. Every time I wanna jump, I have to take my thumb off the aim, right? But if I put my X button, my jump button, on one of the paddles back here, then I can just jump in the back and I don't ever have to take my thumb off. So I'm running around jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm not having to jump, 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 okay? Trigger stops as well. What the trigger stops do is they let you have shorter throw. You see how far I have to pull those triggers now? I want to put the trigger stops on. You don't have to pull as far. And that lets you shoot quicker. But just having it all in a nice package and the customization and modularity is why you would want to get the Astro controller in particular. Having trigger stops and paddles is why you would want to get an Elite controller. I compared this to the Scuff Vantage. The Scuff Vantage has four paddles on the back and two side buttons. And that immediately made me you know, cautious about getting the Astro because I was like, I'm losing additional buttons. What am I gonna do? I don't have you know, four additional buttons that you get on the scuff. Most people take those, those two inner paddles on the, the Vantage off and they say that they're difficult to reach and they take the side buttons off too because they say you press them on accident. So most people are down to the two. And I could also tell you that after using the Astro, having those two extra buttons coming from a non-paddle controller, I had a learning curve. So I think having six extra buttons would have been cumbersome at that point. Even getting past that learning curve, I found that I didn't really need more than that. That gave me the edge that I felt that I needed. And then if I wanted additional buttons, I have the ease of switching a profile switch on the top of the controller, and then I can have two different layouts. You know, if you need four buttons or four paddles on the back of your controller and you need two side buttons and you need all that extra, this isn't the controller for you. But as I said before, I held both and um, I have big hands. I'm a big tall guy and the Astro was awesome to me. It was 
perfect size. With that, let's go ahead and get into some of the controller features and I'll do a, a little mini unboxing. I've already used the product, but I'll show you what comes in the box. I'll show you the software. I'll show you some gameplay and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Let's get into it. All right, so let's get into an unboxing. This is not like the regular unboxing. I've already opened it. I'm just showing you what it looks like, what it came with, um, and then how I customized it as well and the modularity of it. So, regular controller from the looks, right, it's, it's a little bit wider, um, standard buttons here, uh, but on the back, what makes it kind of different is you're going to see that they have these paddles here, and the trigger stops as well. What the trigger stops do is they let you have shorter throw, you see how far I have to pull those triggers now? And when I put the trigger stops on, you don't have to pull as far and that lets you shoot quicker. Uh, this back here is your program button, I'll get more into that. You have a profile switch here, the one dot and two dots, your two different profiles. You also have a wired or wireless switch. With it switched here, that's when you have it plugged in and you're playing wired, and then when you wanna play wireless, you switch it over, okay? L1 and R1. And then let's talk about what makes this really cool. Are the sticks, first of all, you can change them real easily. Let's take them off like that, right? You're gonna get two short concave, two short convex, one tall concave and one tall convex or dome, okay? What I've done is I've put on control freaks, which I'm super excited about. I put these on the dome, the short domes. They're the same size as the PlayStation controller. You can just snap them back on like that. They're the same size as the PlayStation controller. Uh, the specs, so the control freak fit on there. They fit on there real good. Okay. So you also in the box, I got the FPS freak, the galaxies. Um, also in the box, you have a tool uh, to change the face plate or to take it off rather. I'll show you that. Uh, you get a USB dongle for your wireless. You have to have that plugged in for the wireless connection. And then you have your cable up here also, okay? I put on the FPS Freak Call of Duty Heritage Edition so I can just switch those out. It's awesome. I'm gonna move this out the way for a second. And we're gonna look at the modularity of this and what makes this controller unique and standalone. None of the other controllers really are giving you this ability to swap and the best way that I found I see people grabbing on the sides to try to get it out but I just pull one of the sticks up and it'll just take it off once you get it completely that's great there you go see that it just comes right up okay I'll put that up here so look at this all these come out this one comes out this one comes out your d-pad comes out and they give you the ability to swap the the orientation so you may want to have this offset orientation like that like xbox but also you know if this goes bad you can replace this they said they'll be uh 25 dollars around that i said i think um so that's awesome you don't have that ability with other controls you just have to buy another one i prefer the parallel when you put these in, there's lines here. You see that? There's a line there. And then there's also a line on the inside of the controller right here. So you gotta line those up. And if you have any stick drift issues or anything like that, and you know that you've been taking it apart, go back in and check that out. Make sure that you set that right. I love the design on here. They have these stoppers so you're not chasing screws around. You see that? They don't fall out. It's really cool. So I'm gonna put these back in. I was telling my son, just like you do your car tire, if you're changing a tire, you do a star pattern. So you get that tension. And I don't tighten it too tight, just, you know, just hand tight like that. All right. So that's the controller, the overview of what the features are in the controller, the modularity. Um, you know, you have your other standard PlayStation buttons here, uh, but that was that's what makes it different, right? The the paddles on the back, the trigger stops, the profile switching, 
right? And then you have your wired and wireless switch here. What would happen after you open the box, right? You just got the controller, you unboxed it, you drooled over its contents, you saw that, you can customize it, you can put on Control Freaks, you're super excited and you want to play, but you don't play yet. What you got to do first is you need to take this cable, you need to take one of these computers, and you need to update it. Okay, so right now, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about a couple things. First, when I plug this in, you see how recessed that is? That's awesome. That keeps you from wearing out that connection. And once it's in there, it's in there. Pause. Okay, we're going to plug that in. Right. Also have this on deck. We're going to talk about that. Plug it in and plug it into your computer. You notice I'm using the Mac computer. I want to mention something. When this thing first came out, Mac software wasn't available to do any firmware updates. So I le learned right up front that Astra has amazing customer service and that they are diligent and they, they care about fixing problems. Um, and it gave me a good feeling inside. So I'm going to show you the software, how to update, how to customize, things like that. Let's get into the software right now. Okay, now that you have your controller plugged up, I'm going to talk to you about the software and what to look out for there. Um, you do want to have your dongle and your controller. Before you start playing, plug it into this software. You download the software from, um, you know, Astro's website. All right, so you have your controller. You plugged it in. Um, you flip the switch here to uh, wire so that it shows up in the software. Now, in the software, this is what it would look like. You have two different profiles. So again, you can switch that, that flip that switch on the top to switch your profiles. So in profile one, uh, this is default. They've mapped your under right to X and your under left to O, and you can change that. If you wanted to change it, you just click on what you want to change to, and it's done. That's how easy it is. You can also do that on the controller. There's a program button on the back here. So the same way you do that on the controller, if I wanted to remap my under left from O to circle or just remap it in general, what I would do is I'd press on this program button, hold it until the controller lights up and vibrates. I hit what I want to program and what I want programmed to it, and that's what it does. Okay, That's true for anything. So you can program other buttons too. If you want triangle to be square, you hit program, hit triangle, and then hit square. Now your triangle is square. I want to segue into one of the other questions and people have asked, how do I program my shoot and aim to be on the under paddles? And that feature, it, it doesn't seem like you're able to program those two. However, if in the game you can flip them, like in Call of Duty, you can flip L1 and, and R1, you know, these, these buttons here. Once you've flipped them where you now have shoot on R1 and aim on L1, you can then program these buttons to your under paddles. So that at that point, essentially, you can shoot and aim with your under paddles. But that is a feature based on the game and not on the controller currently. All right, now I want to talk about how to map a button to do nothing. Why would you do that? Well, I earlier mapped my jump, my X button, to my under right. So now I no longer have to press X to jump. I use my under button. But sometimes I'll accidentally hit jump. That may happen. I don't want this to do anything anymore. So that's why someone would do that. You would program the X button to be the under right. And that kind of like cancels this out. So I have X programmed to under right currently, and I want X to no longer do anything because I am now using it on my under. So I would hit program, I would hit X, and then I would hit my under paddle to program my under paddle to X. And that will cancel out this button. Then it doesn't do anything. The sticks, however, is something that you have to do in the computer. This is where you can change your sensitivity of the sticks. Like if you want to program dead spots or things like that, I program some drift into my left stick. And I don't, I don't want that necessarily, but I'm just showing you that that's possible. Okay, so I'm going to move that back down. And then you would save these profiles. You can save as many as you want. I recommend you mess around with the settings, change them. You can always come back if you don't like it. Okay, triggers. So right now I have the trigger stops off. So I have full trigger pull. You see that? This is a good example. I put the trigger stop on, and it only goes halfway. Okay? So I have full pull on my left, and then the trigger stop on the right. Okay? That's how the trigger stops work. Astro is an audio company first. They make great headphones, A40s. Uh, but what you're able to do on the controller is you're able to have an EQ here. It looks like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 band EQ. And then you also have a microphone out, your side tone level, and you can control the volume as well. What you find in effects um, are your ability to adjust your rumble sensitivity. So you're not able to take the rumbles out to lighten the controller, but you are able to turn them down or remove them. I like this because I like to turn them down. 
and then you can uh, not not turn them all the way off but just turn them down um, and you can adjust the brightness of that LED on here. What I want to show you now is that you can profile switch and how you can save those. So I'm going back to the main setting here, my profile one. I'm going to change to baseline and I'm going to sync the controller. Okay, so that saves that, that to profile one. What I have in profile one is basically the standard setup. X on under right and O on under left and then no changes here, no changes here. Okay, so I just want it standard, or I could do default. On uh, my profile two, however, I made something. I made one of my own. I call it loot and load for Black Ops, and I'm going to sync that. Okay, so I'll look at the profile. I gave myself a note under right is X and under left is square, so I can loot with my under buttons. And you see here on my rumbles, I just turn them down to 10%. So I don't have to turn them off. I just want them real low. All right, so that's the software. After you've updated your controller and you've updated your dongle for your wireless and you have the software all up to date, then you get into the game. Guy up the hill too. Don't come in here messing with me, bro. You know I got the Astro C40 controller. some of people's concerns. Okay, some of the other things that people have brought up or issues were uh, stick drift or the D-pad not working or uh, something to do with mobility or their D-pad. Okay, now I want to cover how to do a reset or recal on your sticks. Uh, the way you do that is like how you program. You hit this program button, you wait till it vibrates, just like you're trying to program, and then after that you hit it again wait till it vibrates and that recalibrates your stick so if you have program stick drift in there and you run to recalibrate them you can do that to recal okay so a hard reset is something that was recommended by Astro customer service if you have an issue um, with stick drift that the recalibrate doesn't fix or resetting physically your modules if that doesn't fix it the hard reset is holding the program button in the back long enough for this light to blink three times. And that will do a hard reset of your controller. I think that at one time I had that, that an issue where um, I had to, pr I couldn't run. He wasn't sprinting or something. I had to press an L3 to make him sprint. I, th I think you have to do that anyway, but he just was walking otherwise. And what I did was I had already taken out the sticks and moved stuff around before and I just reset it because I didn't think I put it in there right. That worked for me one time. I had another friend who had a problem with stick drift, and he used the recal tip that I gave you guys. Like he called me and he asked me what, what to do, and I told him to use the recal tip or the reset, and those things kind of fix, fix uh, issues as well. If that doesn't work, then you can reach out to Astro's customer service. They have excellent customer service, and they'll get it resolved. Remember, you do want to reach out to them because if you just return your controller, then they are not really finding out what the issues are to fix them quickly. So we have to be letting them know what the problem is so that they can make this the best controller that there is. Make sure that you reach out to Astro's customer service if you have an issue. One of the other things is that, and, and I haven't heard a lot of people talking about it, but 
you know, you can't turn on the PlayStation with the controller because it's not seen as a regular PlayStation controller. Although it is officially licensed by PlayStation, it doesn't show up that way. You know, it, it won't let you turn the PlayStation on, which also means um, that it doesn't tell, it, it doesn't show you a battery percentage. So I hear a lot of, you know, my friends say that their controller just died and how do you know when it's going to die? And I think that's a good point. Like, what what alert what way do people know that their controller is about to die you can't really overcome that like how do we know when the controller is going to die we need some kind of way to to check the battery life now i want to talk about how to turn off your controller it is possible to turn off your controller when it's in the wireless mode uh, by by doing that you can save battery life potentially i think that's what what you would do that for there's not currently a, a way of showing us that you're running out of battery so i would recommend turning off the controller the way that you do that it's in wireless mode right now you press and hold on the playstation button and it'll turn orange and then turn off that's it now the playstation controller is turned off some people have complained about the position of the l1 and r1 buttons get to them like i don't feel like i have to do this a lot of people say i can't do this but I feel like I can press them without having to move. I can press both. All right, so what are my final thoughts? My final thoughts are I definitely love elite controllers. I love paddles. I love having the quick shot and having the ability to move around and jump and still be able to aim. So I, I'm sold on that. Um, and I, I'm pretty sold on the Astro controller as well. I love the, the size of it, I love the modularity, although I'm not gonna use offset, I find benefit in the ability to potentially replace a part of the controller instead of having to continually buy new controllers. I think that's something that sets this apart from any other controller. Nobody is able to do that and I haven't ever seen that before. So for that, um, yeah, I'm sold on Astro. I love it for first person shooters. I've also had a chance to use it on other games like uh, Spider-Man and, and Tekken just to see how it performed um, elsewhere. I can say that when I played a fighting game, when I played Tekken, I didn't really, it didn't, it felt good still. Um, however, when I played Spider-Man the first time, I, I, I kind of felt like I was trying to relearn the controller again. All that told me was that it may be more suited for particular games. However, when I played Spider-Man a few more times, then I got used to the controller. The price tag was $200. Um, I think that that is something that you have to decide if it fits within your budget. Is it worth $200? Absolutely. If when you bought it, does it do awesome stuff? Does it perform? Absolutely. They're all around the same price. I found them from $150 to $250, so I think it's right on, on par with what the other controllers are, are costing right now. All in all, I really, really like this controller. I mean, I love the, the, the feel, how wide it is. I love the modularity. I love the, the textured grip. You know, I said before, it feels smooth right now, but the more you, you sweat, the, the more aggressive the grip gets. Um, they do give you a, a tall and short concave and dome. Um, I love that I was able to put my control freaks on there. That's awesome. But I would recommend this controller to anybody who is uh, an avid gamer who wants a, that additional edge. And I would say if you if you think that the controller is going to make you a pro gamer, then you should just play more games and get better first. If you found this video useful or helpful, or if you didn't like it, if you felt any kind of way watching this, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, this is my first review video, and I would love to hear what you think about the information, any questions you have, anything, anything. I need your support. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Man, I'm dumb sometimes, man. Get this guy. Oh, yes. You just saved my life. No! Look at that. 
Oh, somebody else just landed. Who's that? Purple? Oh, that's you. Oh. Nope. Nope. That was not Noah. They... Boy, try to flame me. You saw that? Hell yeah. Oh, I hit that guy so much. Got him. Oh, good. Nice. Yeah, Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. We all had sub 150 hell. Yes. Look how much, it, and I had to pee so bad too. <laughs> Woo! We we barely had any help, and I had I had two. I had two, bro. Man, oh gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> that's how. Game, fellas. That's how you Good go to sleep. Game. Hell yeah. yeah. That's how you, that's how you <laughs> peace out. Nice. Good shit.